Welcome all. I'm the creator of Advanced Planning Analytics. My name is Cesar Ramos. And today I want to post a quick video on creating a Gantt chart in Excel. So quick snippet, I guess. So as as an example, professionals, project managers, project controls uh, out there that may not have access to a scheduling software. However, there could be a need to create an executive level one or level two that emulates a Gantt chart, so to speak. Uh, so in, in my example, what I'm going to show you is a P6 file with data transposed. Show that now. And it's possible that you want to emulate, in my example, a schedule which uh, you want to summarize into important portions of the project. So instead of uh, being at the mercy of a software that you may not have access to or a scheduler that isn't available to help you out, uh, I'm going to take a piece of this information and show you how to do it in Excel. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to select just very randomly uh, process deliverables in this case. This is an onshore template that I have. And I'll go to a uh, planked out Excel. I'll paste the data in. And what I'm really after is the duration themselves and the start date. I have float in there, but for now I'm not using it. I will use the labor unit and I'll show you why later. So quick cleanup, I'm going to select the start date. So you go ahead and, oh, before I start, I want to show that this milestone has a finished milestone, but I still want to represent it, and I'm only using the start date. So I'm going to copy the date over, and I'm just going to put a uh, five-day duration so that it shows up on the chart. So you select start. And you go into insert the horizontal bar and be sure to pick the stack bar, not the 100% the stack bar. Uh, when you select this, you're going to get something that looks somewhat like this. Okay, expand this out. So you'll see the initial bars spread. Uh, so now you're going to make it look like a Gantt. And you're roughly going to take the next set of data and you're going to add duration. So in this case, I'm just going to rename it duration and select the criteria here, which is our original duration. And you're going to get something that looks like this. Okay. So let me spread this out a little further. Now what you're going to do is you're going to add um, the labels for your duration. So you do that by selecting uh, your series again. And you select here. And when you go to edit, you're going to access the activity name, which in this case is the deliverables for process. And you'll see that they've showed up on the chart here. You can now get rid of this legend and make some room for the chart itself. So you see it's coming together, starting to take shape, right? So now we've got to do some cleanup so it makes it more look more like a Gantt, if you will. And you're going to do that by selecting the blue bars, which are your start dates. And you're going to format the data series. And you're going to select no fill. This will make the bars transparent, which, you, which is what you want. The second thing you want to do is you want to go into your access and format your access by reversing your categories in, in reverse order. And you can see now it's starting to look like again. Right? But we want to do some more cleanup to it. Okay? 
So we're going to do a few things to improve the uh, the the chart itself. Sorry. And you start off by this white space that was your start that's now transparent. We want to scoot the bars over to the left so you have more chart area. So we have to select the start date, right click, and go to format cells. When you click on general, you have to remember that number 39541. You're not going to change anything here. Hit cancel. But what you are going to do is you're going to go to your access, format your access by Sorry. Format your axis. Okay, so you're going to format your axis up here. And under fix, you're going to type in 39541, which was the number. And you're going to fix your area. I'm going to go ahead and change these to. Uh, major unit of 30 which should be 30 days roughly so it looks more uh, of a calendar cutoff and you can change those intervals as as you see fit but you see that uh, it's starting to take shape okay so then from here we're gonna do a few things and this is uh, in this particular s series option you can format your data series by changing your overlap cap and I'll show you what I do if I go to zero, which some folks like to do, the bars look uh, pretty thick. What I like to do is I like to keep it around maybe 70, 70 percent. I think that looks proportionate. And overlap stays at uh, 100 percent. And my fill, I like to change the colors to your typical green that you see in most uh, schedules just so it looks kind of like again it might be a bit bright but I'll, uh, I'll change it one more darker shade I guess this one now if you recall my uh, schedule had some critical items the pfds client review and equipment process and data sheets so for the schedule itself i'm going to change only the particular data point so that it looks critical now Let's see, equipment process and also equipment list. I believe that might have been the one, but you get the idea. And I still don't like these greens, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. Okay, so now that you've got your uh, bars uh, colored, and your uh, Gantt, you can uh, always tweak the uh, the bars. You can also add labels. Unfortunately, uh, adding the labels, if you format the data labels, you can change it to category name, but they don't go to the right, like inside. They either go inside or outside or the center. And for that reason, I, I like the labels, but uh, since they can't, and I go to the uh, right, I kind of just leave them out for now. So another thing I've done is, let's say you want to transpose a curve. And in this particular case, I'm going to use the budgeted labor units. Now, if you notice, I'm going to copy this data over twice to do a couple of things to add some formulas. So this will be cumulative cumulative labor units and if you notice my formula takes the first cell at the top then all succeeding after that will take the 
one above plus the number to the left and I drag that formula down which gives me a cumulative value now this one will be the percent cumulative and I'm going to take the value divided by the total and change that to a percentage and in this particular case I'm going to F4 or lock the cell. Now we'll drag down the formula so that it shows to be percentage. This may not be the, the right spread, but I'm only doing this to illustrate what you can do with the Gantt itself. So from here, I'm going to add another uh, series of data. Series name will be the cell listed as percent cumulative and I'm going to take the values here of uh, the percentages okay and then I'm going to close this out Let's see. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to take the data series and select the numbers to the right. I'm going to show you why in a second. Oops, sorry. So if I cancel that, go back to edit. And I select the data to the right. It's going to show up real weird for a second. I want that because I'm going to change that to the secondary axis. And I'm doing that so that I can change the series type to a, to a line, cumulative line represented. So now that I've got that selected, I can scoot over the percentages and then I can modify the data series and put in some uh, data points and then I will go ahead and modify the data series so that the labels show below or above it base it basically depends on how you want to represent it this case this looks a little better so now what you have is your Gantt in a few easy steps oh sorry I'll go ahead and delete the labels on the right there because I've got them embedded in the line and what you have is your Gantt in Excel pretty easy uh, very updatable uh, you could insert lines, you could do uh, quite a bit of things, insert more information, uh, update it, if you will, make it a little more dynamic. It will not run CPM, so that's not the case. It's not dependent on logic, but it represents uh, what you're after in terms of uh, deliverables over time, illustrating a Gantt chart. So I hope this helps you. I hope you enjoyed it. Appreciate you guys' time. Uh, in case uh, you cannot emulate my instructions, I I will uh, leave the Excel file downloadable on my website. It's just a template, but feel free to download it if you feel you need it. And uh, once again, thank you for your time.